All right, good morning everyone. So welcome back to the channel and here we are in Stellarium uh, looking at uh, M51, the, the iconic colliding galaxies located around 31 million light years away. I first imaged M51 uh, a couple of years ago when I was first starting out in the, in the hobby and uh, that was using the uh, 8 inch Newtonian with a, a Z50 mirrorless uh, camera. And two years later, we're back imaging M51 again. Uh, so the last last week, uh, over the course of uh, four evenings, I uh, put some integration time into M51 and collected uh, a number of subs uh, over the, the course of those four nights. Uh, so today, I thought, well, we'll take a look back at the first image I captured and also the latest images that I've processed and just see how things have changed uh, over the course of time as both the equipment has changed and obviously my processing uh, abilities have uh, improved somewhat, shall we say. So if we head over to Pixinsight and uh, the first images we'll take a quick look at, uh, nothing spectacular but uh, as I say I was first starting out in the hobby and uh, using the 8 inch Newtonian uh, with the Z50 camera and I captured a number of images uh, that I stacked. Now, unfortunately, my uh, file system back then wasn't the great, but I did come across uh, a couple of the stacks that I had tried uh, using uh, the data gathered uh, that evening. So there was not a lot of uh, not a lot of data captured. Uh, so here's the first frame. So this is a stacked image out of DSS, I believe, and uh, I think both of these are round about. Uh, an hour and a half to almost two hours maybe of total integration time for the subs and uh, you can see there's uh, quite a marked difference there between the two sets I think one of them on the right uh, for some reason I've already got a comment in there saying with display stretch but uh, as I said I've got uh, no idea what I had done back in those d early days uh, when I was pulling these images together and uh, obviously then I had a processed image that I found in the same folder. Uh, so here is what uh, the final image came out with. Now obviously it's, uh, it's not the greatest image in the world, but you know when you're first starting out you've got to start somewhere. And uh, I think at the time, you know, for, for the equipment I was using and the knowledge I had, uh, I was quite pleased with what I'd uh, managed to capture after only maybe, you know, four or five weeks of uh, trying to uh, get into this hobby. So we fast forward two years, uh, almost to the day as I say, and now that we're using the RASA 11 uh, inside the observatory using a, a DSO uh, AstroCool camera, so the ZWO-ASI 2600 one-shot colour camera, and the camera was also cooled down to minus five degrees, and I was also using a UV IR cut filter. So here's the two different stacks that came out of uh, Deep Sky Stacker. So if we apply a quick stretch uh, to both these uh, stacks that come out of DSS, you can see uh, what data is lurking in the shadows. And uh, both of them uh, have come out uh, not too bad, uh, quite clean uh, around uh, the galaxy. And the one on the right, uh, that's the one that had the flats applied. You can see the gradients are obviously slightly different there. And again, uh, it's looking not too bad uh, around the galaxy. Uh, so once we crop this down and uh, we'll get something to, to play with. All right, moving on. And uh, the reason there was two stacks is the first one, uh, I collected it, stacked it, processed it. And then I went back and tried uh, something slightly different. Uh, so the one on the left is, let me just get the data up. Uh, here we go, here's all the, the stacking information. Uh, so the total integration time there was I think 13 hours, seven minutes. Unfortunately, DSS doesn't give you the total, it just gives you the different groups. So as I say, I captured it over a number of evenings, a couple of different gain settings and uh, total integration as I say was around about 13 hours and 7 minutes and then when I restacked it the second time this time I added some flats into the mix across the set 
and also reduce the, the total percentage of the uh, stacked images down to 75%, uh, which gave me a total integration time of uh, 11 hours and 7 minutes. So after taking uh, both these stacks and doing the usual curves and histograms and stretches and uh, also a bit of topaz uh, sharpen and topaz denoise, I believe, uh, although I can't quite remember where in the mix uh, I used the uh, noise exterminator versus um, uh, Topaz uh, Noise uh, Eliminator or whatever it's called, Topaz Noise AI. Uh, so for the image on the left, this was the first attempt I did. Uh, it came out not too bad, a lot of colours uh, have come through. Stars are maybe just a little bit fuzzy, I think, when I was messing around with the starless, uh, sorry, the star mask. Uh, I pulled uh, things a little bit differently on that one and uh, maybe could have been a little bit sharper. And the second stack, which I was a lot more pleased with the, uh, the, the, the balance and the colours with this one, uh, although I think I pushed the saturation uh, a little bit high, you can see in the stars they've, they've turned into to more a, a white blob. Uh, but not the less, nevertheless, the uh, the galaxy itself uh, has come out uh, not too bad. So I think there's clearly been uh, an improvement uh, over the, the last two years. So what I'll also do though is uh, all the data I captured that evening, I'll put a link down to the, in the description to, to the source files. Uh, so you can feel free uh, to grab that data and uh, have, a, have a go at yourself uh, stacking and processing uh, and see what you masters can, uh, can come up with. So that's uh, really just wanted to, to say where we are today, uh, and then and now, and uh, I think if I go and grab uh, the original image, uh, move that to workspace three, uh, we can see you know where where we've gone from and, and where we've gone to. So uh, there's definitely a significant improvement uh, over time. So hopefully, uh, I'll maybe process this one again, uh, do another stack on it and uh, maybe clean up uh, some of the, the, the star mask uh, and reduce uh, some, maybe uh, some of the intensity uh, on the filters etc uh, as I try to process it again. But uh, for the meantime, you know, I'm pretty happy how things have, have progressed. Uh, obviously the, the changing of the telescope, the, the, the RASA is just a big light bucket effectively and um, obviously the camera and the length of the, the total integration uh, significantly help with the, the noise um, to signal to noise ratio. So that's it. As I say, I'll put the links down to the bottom. I'll leave the three images uh, at the end and uh, you can uh, feedback any comments, thoughts, questions or anything uh, relating to this. And uh, we'll look forward to, to see what we'll come up with, with next. So thanks for watching, clear skies everyone, and we'll catch you in the next one.